Now this illustration deals with the grounding electrode in accordance with 250.32a as an apple. Now, looking at the electrodes that could be present here in this uh, illustration, at either one of the buildings that you see, building one or two, you may have structural steel uh, in the building. You may have a euphor ground, they call it, the concrete encased electrode that you see there. You may have a metal water pipe with 10 feet or more of it in the earth. You may have a ground ring encircling the building, and it may even be for lightning protection or whatever. And then you may have a driven rod. But we're just looking at this and saying if you had all of those, they would have to be bonded in in accordance with 250.50 if possible. Uh, to create a grounding electrode system. Now, if this was an existing building and you didn't have any of those uh, that you see listed there, you could have a driven rod driven. And then you'd need to read 25 ohms or less by 250.53, and you look at that exception. I believe it's two in there that, that deals with that, but, but you're in that area. Now, uh, to, to select your selection for the 25 ohm rule. Now, uh, what this is stating, in most all cases, you'll have a concrete encased electrode. And you'll have the building still in many cases. They've got to be bonded in as a common grounding electrode system in accordance with 250.50. Then you've got to qualify them as an electrode. Is the steel considered an electrode? Ten feet or more of it in the earth? Or is it... Uh, bonded into the concrete encased electrodes, as you see. Uh, how is it uh, bonded in? You say, no, it floats. Then you wouldn't use 250.52A2 for the steel. You would use 250.104C as in car, and it has to be bonded in. You don't want it to float if it's likely to become energized. So uh, how, the reason I list those up there, any of those could be present. Uh, or maybe not present at all. So you have to provide a grounding electrode or system if they're present, and that's what this illustration is pointing out. Then don't forget, if you had a feeder, say running from a building in a substation up to that building number one, and you're wanting to determine how many overcurrent devices could be used, and installed, you'd go to 225.32 uh, exception one. And there's no limit, but you would need to review the installation in accordance with the authority having jurisdiction or the plan checker uh, of the city, uh, county, or state to see what their rules were going to be in relation to 230.71 B as in boy, one through four. You're going to have to review that section along with 225.32 exception one for those number of mains and how they could be installed and still be considered complying with the NEC in accordance with the authority having jurisdiction. Remember that now because I, I think that will be a very important thing. Then notice the NEC loop uh, suggests is to re review figure 16-77 for similar installation on grounding with a, a more additional type information. So figure 16-53 is dealing with means to provide a grounding electrode or system, whichever is available to you, or uh, what do you do to provide either a grounding electrode or a grounding electrode system based upon it being an existing building or a new building, and then how you're going to arrange the mains in accordance with 230.71, B as in boy, 1 through 4. Also, if you wanted to apply 225.32, exception 1. I find this is very important uh, when you're supplying uh, a feeder to a building from a service equipment location, 
in accordance with Article 100, the definition of service point.